and it all goes into deep storage and we, we pull it every Thursday, we get a delivery. But uh, I'm not sure exactly how much krill we go through, but they don't eat as much as you think. Each of those whale sharks at 20 something feet long now is eating somewhere between eight and 15 pounds of krill a day, which is much less than a marine mammal of equivalent size. <coughs> if that were a beluga whale, they would be eating 70 pounds of food a day. Uh, so it's, it's really, I think they're very efficient at assimilation and very efficient at swimming, uh, so they don't use as much. We don't just feed them krill, we also feed them uh, lance fish, uh, a Missouri gel diet with some vegetable components and, and uh, vitamin supplementation, and occasionally we supplement with other things like chopped squid, and they don't like clam much. So, yeah. so the, the fish eggs are basically the french fries for the, for the website. When you say french fries, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, so we did some caloric analysis of the fish eggs and of mixed zooplankton at, at, at the Holbosch site where they're not feeding on fish eggs, they're feeding on a mixed zooplankton community, mostly suggested shrimps. Uh, and the, um, the caloric density was pretty similar. These tuna eggs don't have, they're not particularly yolky, they're completely transparent, so they don't have a high lipid content, they're not particularly energy dense. The real difference between Holbosch and the offshore site is in caloric density per unit of water volume, right? Because the eggs are so much more abundant that the energy density that can be harvested per cubic meter of water is much higher if you're feeding on the fish egg site, not because of the fish eggs, but because of, of how abundant they are. So I hope that makes sense, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Are there plans for expansion of the aquarium as the whale sharks grow? Or? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, the exhibit was designed to hold six adult whale sharks. I think most of us are happy with the four that we have right now and, and <laughs> because we also have four manta rays in there as well that are quite large and I think the, the most of us are pretty happy to stop where we are. Yeah, but I don't mean, know if we're right now. Or <coughs> right, so at some point, I, we don't know how, yeah. how large they're going to get in the aquarium or how long that process is going to take. I can tell you the growth rate is significantly tapered off from what it was when we first put them in. They were 12 to 13 feet long when they went in. They're around 20, 21 feet now. Uh, uh, it's a long time. They're, they're still hopelessly immature. I mean, the, the male, they're not going to mature until they're 27 feet or more. Uh, so they're still early teenagers, prepubescent. So um, we did make a lifelong commitment to the animals. So w if they were to get to 40, 45 feet in length, hopefully at that point I'm working somewhere else and that's somebody else's <laughs> problem. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. We, we don't know. Every, this is one of the first questions people ask us, what are you, what are you going to do when they, when they breed? I just don't know if there's room for expansion outside the tank. I mean, you, you probably space. couldn't expand the tank, but if you saw it coming, you would have time to build a new tank. Uh, and so we could do something like that, knock down one of our other galleries. So we built a, we built a huge expansion, a two, two million gallon expansion for our dolphin stadium so we could do something like that, knock over the dolphin stadium and build a bigger tank for the whale sharks. Uh, but it is, I mean, these are worthwhile questions to ask. And in the long-term strategic planning of the institution, I'm not sure that those questions have been fully asked and answered, but it's definitely something that people on the husbandry side think about all the time. So, yes? This is pretty unrelated to whale sharks, but since <coughs> you mentioned dolphins, I thought I'd ask. Mm -hmm. So I know you guys have a dolphin show, which is fairly new. Mm -hmm. Has there been a lot of backlash? And Not. is there any plans about keeping it? Or yeah, so, so the, there have been, been a couple of vocal people who like to come and complain about this, uh, the, about having marine mammals in captivity. There seems to be some change in the public attitude about having cetaceans in captivity. I'm fairly agnostic about it, personally. I really don't mind. As long as the animals are happy and healthy and well cared for, uh, and ours certainly are, as they mostly are at, at every AZA and AMMPA accredited facility, uh, the animals are generally pretty happy. Um, you know, I, I think as long as, you, as long as you're looking after the animals and as there's value in it, I mean, I think it's really important to package this stuff with value. You have to be achieving the mission of the place. There has to be some conservation, some science, some education that goes with it. I think straight up entertainment probably is harder to defend in the long run when okay, you're dealing you with something like this. Show. So I mean, like, we yeah, do, and like the show... Right, so our, I mean, our show is, is pretty much straight up entertainment. Um, and so uh, I have to rely on people getting those other mission components elsewhere in the building. So you entertain them at the dolphin show and then they come out into the galleries and they, they learn about whale shark science or they learn about the dolphin health assessment that we do in the Indian River Lagoon and things like that. I mean, I think the aquarium is thoroughly committed to having uh, a vibrant marine mammal program. Uh, so I don't think they're planning on shutting that down anytime soon. But it's really interesting to see, to see the public debate taking place. Uh, you get very different perspectives depending on who you ask. Uh, but it, it's, I think it's a fascinating time. To, and I think, those, I think those are questions that we should ask all the time. Is this right? 
as we learn more about the cognitive abilities of these animals and their social behaviour, is this the right thing to do to keep them in uh, aquarium settings? I don't have good answers for you, but I think it's right to ask, ask the questions. It would be interesting to see the <coughs> revenue of <coughs> the dolphin show and still, you know, same kind of interest and in view. Well, I can certainly tell, well, because we had three years before we opened the Dolphin Show, we didn't get as much increase in revenue and attendance from having the Dolphin Show as I think a lot of people expected that we would. Mm -hmm. um, that might have been a function of the fact that at that time the tickets were separate, so you paid to come to the aquarium and then you paid an upcharge to go to the Dolphin Show. Now they're all rolled into the same ticket, um, and it's that opportunity to look for that bump in revenue and attendance is gone, so we missed it, came, came and went. Um, but I, I don't... I don't think it fundamentally changed what we are as an institution, but I have to tell you, we were just talking before about going to the Dolphin Show, and as I look around the room, people love it. Their families really eat it up. It's, it's, I mean, they really leave with a huge smile on their face, and everybody's really happy. Uh, and I look at it, and I'm like, well, we could have fit some more education in there, or we could have taught them a little bit more about natural history there. Uh, but they, every, I look around, and everybody's having a ball. So... You know, there, there may be a very vocal uh, sector of society that's talking about marine mammal captivity, but there's also a giant majority that has no issue with it at all. So, uh, Yeah, one more. Uh, where did the other four whale sharks come from? All of our whale sharks came from Taiwan. Yeah. So They were caught in a, a pelagic trap fishery off the coast of Wailin, Taiwan. <clears throat> so at that time, they were part of a harvest fishery that... Quota has since stepped down to zero, ironically probably because of the public attention that we brought to whale sharks and the whale shark fishery there as a result of having them in, in the aquarium. So um, yeah, it's now pretty much illegal to harvest whale sharks for food everywhere in the world. Uh, it's a CITES Appendix 2 listed species. So uh, the four animals that we have now are in a very real sense priceless because it would be very hard for us to go and get whale sharks from anywhere else now. So I should probably give it a rest there so give everyone a chance to get on with their day. But thank you. All right, thank you.